Well, good day. Today is um, Wednesday, the 29th of June, and it's a piece of St. Peter and Paul, the great feast of the church, particularly in Rome. Um, Paul was the uh, apostle of the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, and Peter was uh, the prince of the apostles, the first pope, you know, and he was um, all, always, uh, in the beginning, he was kind of limiting his ministry to the to the um, Jewish people. But they came to a first council of Jerusalem. They came to a conclusion that you know, Christ didn't come just for one group. He came for the redemption of all people. And so we celebrate the Feast of Peter and Paul together. And um, it's also the day that the, the Pope uh, makes new cardinals. And he, he uh, kind of invests them. It's a big feast in Rome, a big celebration. But we celebrate today in our own parish, because Paul, of course, is our own uh, patron at St. Paul of the Cathedral. And uh, he's the, um, and the conversion of Paul was very dramatic. And, you know, he was, Jesus appeared to him, and um, he was thrown down and was blind for a few days, and then um, became one of the great apostles, too, joining the others. So I mean, that's what we have today. That's the feast of today. Tomorrow I have to go to a diocesan finance board um, because I'm the vicar general. I on all, all these boards by region, reason of my um, place in the diocese, uh, and um, so tomorrow I'll be kind of tied up most of the day with um, meetings of finance meetings. We meet every uh, few months and make sure everything's done in order. It's a wonderful board we have members that serve our diocese and watch over the financial um, transactions and what happens in, in the diocese. And it's a wonderful group of people representing representatives from the whole diocese, all different places, who kind of uh, keep their eye on the financial situation of our diocese. It's one of those necessary parts that we have to be concerned about too, not just the spiritual, but the um, monetary and uh, physical uh, responsibilities that the church has too. So. Tomorrow I will be there most of the day from at least 12 to, or 10 rather, from 10 to at least 2.30. And um, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't love meetings, but I know they're necessary. I want to congratulate um, Scott St. Mary, who was elected the um, Grand Knight of our Knights of Columbus here. And I want to congratulate him on assuming that duty, um, responsible for the um, well-being of our and the and the smooth running of our local Knights of Columbus, and we are happy to have him here. We have a few funerals coming up. Um, for Juan Carlos Zavala, who was killed um, this few days ago, and that's going to be on the eighth of uh, July. And then we have um, Shirley Schmidt on the eleventh. Um, one of the great old timers of our parish community, Leo and, and Shirley were, were, were foundations, really pillars of the parish. And um, we have to say a fond goodbye to her. I'm sure she's, because of a great life that she lived, I'm sure she's with God this very day. And also we have uh, uh, come one coming up on Saturday the, uh, the 9th of July for Pearl Brady, um, Karen Arles mother and um, Karen married um, she became a de Domenico uh, several months ago uh, maybe a year ago but um, Karen was a great parishioner here they moved over to um, Denver uh, the de Domenico is to be near Karen's son the married son and his family the grandkids they always have a kind of a a great control over grandparents, grandchildren do. We know that. Sunday, um, on the 3rd of July, this coming Sunday, we have a, a reception. And um, I've asked a uh, resurrection group and um, Kay Ockett and her gang and Lynn and the others have always been most receptive and they agreed to have provide extra food, good food, for the reception on Sunday after the 11 o'clock Mass. So at noon, in our assembly place, and even if you're not at the 11 o'clock Mass, come on back for it. 
Jerry's been our music director, we know, for 24 years here. And um, he's done a marvelous job for us. And he's really put our cathedral, um, kept our cathedral with the high standards of liturgical music that a cathedral needs and deserves. And we wish him the best as he undertakes a new enterprise, a new job, back in his hometown in the area of Omaha, Nebraska. Um, to me, I don't know why anybody would want to live in Omaha, but that's fine. <laughs> it's probably, I've never been there, so it's probably a beautiful place. Um, so that'll be after the 11 o'clock Mass at noon over in the Assembly Place. Come on and join us and thank him for his wonderful service and quality music program that he's, he has kept going here in our parish for the, almost a quarter century. Um, what happened with our youth programs? Um, Sean's here, he can always correct me if I make a mistake, but they're meeting tonight at Franklin Park at 6.30, uh, and they play all kind of frisbee and crazy games over there. And then next week, they, want, they meet tune to Thursday, return to Thursday, but from now on for the summer, most of the uh, occasion, of the observances and the parties and games and activities of the youth will be on Thursday evenings at 6.30. And most of them at Franklin Park, but not all. Um, we have, a, we have a, um, a baseball game with the Pippins coming up too. When's that, John? July 26th. It's July 26th. Tuesday. Okay. And um, these tickets are $2. And we have a whole section reserved for us, just St. Paul. So if you want to come... Doesn't matter whether you have kids uh, of school age or not, come on and join us. It's, it's kind of a fun evening up there. And um, being out in the good weather and cheering for our local baseball team, it's a good thing. So that'll be on the 26th at, what time is? 6.35. 6.35, okay. You know where it is. It's out there but in the fairgrounds. I'd like to be able to give you good news about our school, but I can't. Uh, there's no more development of it. We kind of appealed the amount of money that they, the insurance company was ready to give us and um, because we don't think it'll cover all the expenses of uh, returning returning our school to the, its position where it was and the condition it was before the flood. But uh, it's on appeal right now and hopefully very soon we'll have a another uh, report to give you where we can start renovating and bringing back, restoring, I should say, the school the way it was. We're going to block off the top floor and where all the little cells or rooms were for the nuns up there. There's 33 of them, I believe, and um, we're going to use that just for storage, but the rest of the school we'll be able to use, and we all need it. The Resurrection Group needs it. Sean needs it for his youth group. Religious education needs it. We all need it for all these different meetings that we have, receptions, and so we want to get back as soon as possible. But it's been six months now since it happened, and I hope and pray we can get some good news about the school very soon. Monday is the 4th of July, the 246th anniversary of the foundation of our nation, establishment of our nation. And um, it's, a great, it's a great holiday to celebrate freedom and to celebrate the fact that we are Americans and we have the wonderful nation that we belong to, we're a part of, that we make it up. Um, I encourage you to come and join us for Mass that morning. I know it's Monday, the 4th of July at 9 o'clock in our cathedral. Um, there won't be any 7 o'clock Mass that morning, but Mass will be offered at 9 and uh, we'll be celebrating our own nation and our own heritage as as Christian, Catholic Christians in the United States of America. We're so privileged to live where we do. Even in this part of the country, when you look and you see the horrible weather conditions they've had even the last few weeks, a terrible heat wave that's killed many, many people in the middle part of our country. You look at the hurricanes and, and um, tornadoes that exist in different parts of our country, we're we're singularly blessed to be living in this beautiful area where we are. So let's come, gather and give thanks on Monday the 4th of July at 9 o'clock Mass for families. And you get home in time to really have a, a full day of, of whatever you're planning on, baseball games or swimming or 
fishing or camping, whatever it might be. Parish Pente is coming on Sunday, the 24th of uh, July, three weeks from this Sunday. And uh, it'll be at Franklin Park at the um, Rotary Shelter. And um, it's always a wonderful time. They, they prepared a wonderful, uh, Pat and Lisa O'Connor and their crew have fun, planned a wonderful celebration. Great food, doesn't cost you anything except just to come. Bring a lawn chair or something to sit on on the grass and, and, and in the shade. If, hopefully it's a sunny day, bring bathing suits. The pool will be open as hours from five o'clock until seven, I believe, on that evening. And the party will last, starts at five, but it will go on until it finishes. The picnic, the parish picnic. So it's Sunday the 24th of July at five o'clock at Franklin Park. We are looking, as we're still looking for a new music director to take Jerry's place. Um, it's really, we need to be very careful. We get a person of real quality and somebody you can get along with people and choirs and, and be uh, a really somebody who is advanced in education and knowledge about the liturgical life of the church. And it's very difficult to entice people to come to Yakima. They mostly, mostly they kind of go out to the bigger cities where they can find more cult cultural events. Although I remind them we have a first class uh, symphony here in our town. We have great theater and um, you know, this is a great place to live. So hopefully we can get someone within the next few weeks, otherwise Yours truly will be doing a lot of extra fumbling at the organ to make up for the lack of musicians that we have at some of the masses. Um, we have a new housekeeper, Carla, who served us for 22 years in our parish and taking care of all the priest's um, needs and laundry and clean house and all that. Carla, we, 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 she's um, resigning or retiring as of 1st of July and we have a wonderful replacement, Maria Alvarado, and uh, just beginning right now. And we're looking forward to working with her as a really a prized and a special um, <coughs> member of our parish staff uh, beginning this week. Let's see. I think that's about all I want to mention to you. Um, we have a great week of summers ahead of us. We have Mass every day, as you know, and um, I invite you to come and be part of our worshiping congregation on weekdays, one day a week or five days or six days a week, whatever you'd like. But we have Mass every day in our chapel, and we invite you to come. The Spanish Mass, of course, a special one, on Tuesday evenings at 7, at seven o'clock in the chapel. So please come. And join us. Thank you again for your continued support, Knights of Columbus, for your continued presence and help at Masses. It's wonderful greeters, and people really appreciate your being so positive when they come into Mass and so joyful when you greet them. We're happy to have you. We were going to look over again, we are going to look over again on the possibility of restoring communion from the cup in front of both species, but um, we we're looking at it for the 14th of, um, of uh, September, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, but with the, with the upswing of cases, of COVID cases in our valley and here in our area, I'm not sure we'll be able to restore it that soon, uh, but we're, 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 we haven't forgotten it. You know, it's a wonderful way to share more fully in the Eucharist, and we hope to be able to restore that practice very soon. Um, thanks again for your continuing support and help, and it's my pleasure and privilege to ask God's blessing upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and shine His face upon you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.